Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. I'm Juice and today's video is going to be a follow-on in the first phase of Supercarrier Case 3 that we talked about earlier this week. And in this video we're just going to talk about the initial phase, the inbound phase where we're going to contact them, uh, con call in inbound, we're going to go to the area where we're going to go where they tell us to go and establish and then once we reach our commence time we'll start commencing. So uh, before you get into this um, procedure by yourself and everything, go and read up on some references. Uh, one of the references you might want to look at is the CV NATOPS manual, uh, NATOPS CV manual. And what it is is the, um, this is the NAVAIR 00-80T-105, T is in Tango. And this is the one I found online, it's the July uh, 2009. I'm sure there's a more current document out there, but this gives you the basics of uh, what the Navy uses for CV ops in regards to turboprop and jet aircraft and everything. You can even find information on helicopters if you like in there. And uh, so it's easy to navigate through. Once you find this online, you can you know click on the, the the paragraphs in the table of contents and it'll jump you to that page, or you can just go and thumb through it and everything. But before you go and use this, I recommend you start with the ED guide for supercarrier, it's going to be the one that's most applicable for what the capabilities are within Eagle Dynamics' DCS world. And the reason I say that is, is none of us are professional aviators. I mean, there, I'm sure there's a few of us out here that are in, in here that are former Navy CV pilots that are doing DCS now and enjoy it and everything. But, you know, uh, if you did this in real life, it's hard work. It's it's a lot of work to uh, get the, you know, the, to cross your T's and dot your I's. Uh, in every aspect, I mean, there's so much. You're being watched, you're being evaluated all the time. And what we're doing in DCS World is just having fun. Uh, so let's go to the DCS Supercarrier Guide. And let's just get you out of the weather and on the deck. So in the DCS Supercarrier Guide, uh, the only language that's in there right now is English. I apologize to anybody that doesn't read or speak English, but uh, that's all that we have right now from ED. They don't have a, a German or a Czech or uh, any other types of guides right now so you might want to write into to WAGS and ask him why. So in that section you'll find the section on Case 3 recovery and uh, what we're going to cover today is just the first phase of the Case 3 recovery. Uh, you can find this guide in your DCS files under the folder mods slash tech slash supercarrier slash doc and in that folder you'll see the uh, supercarrier guide in a PDF format that you can open up. And then in that, I think I went to page 42, I actually printed out page 42 as a cheat sheet because that's what I use for doing this supercarrier um, recovery. But in there, it, you know, it, it basically tells you what I'm going to read you here is the approach starts with an inbound call uh, to the marshal who will assign you holding location, holding altitude, uh, and approach time. You'll depart the holding stack and approach uh, and approach uh, at the approach time and radio commencing to the controller. So it's, it's designed so that everybody is stacked a thousand feet up on each other and it's also designed so that everybody commences a minute um, apart. So it gives good spacing for the recovery and potential go around or wave off. So with that let's go ahead and I'll show you what I did uh, first on TAC view. We'll look at the TAC view view and we'll hit play and I'm running this at five times speed and we'll, I'll zoom in and try to show you stuff. We're running this at five times speed but let's go and let's switch right here and then let's go on to me. So I'm out here you can see that, let me pause this real quick let's see why is, let me go back over here. I'm gonna go back to juice on this side apologies real quick this I hit a button and it messed it up and we'll go to that. So now we'll focus on me. Alright, so hit play. There, so you can see that I am currently uh, at 350 knots plus a little bit um, at 1G and I am climbing up to Angel's uh, 1,508, uh, or 15,009. I'm climbing up to get to uh, out of the airspace. And what we're going to do is we're actually setting ourselves up so that we can pretend that we're coming back in from a mission. I just air started with about a 6.5, 6.8 fuel state uh, and I am set a bingo of 3000 for my decision fuel if I'm going to divert or go hit the tanker if I don't trap by then. So I go outside the carrier control zone 
outside the radar bubble of everybody and I call up. And when I'm calling up on this, we're going to go ahead and play the full uh, track so you can see what I'm doing. So they gave me the uh, radio assignment, which was 166. It was 180 degrees uh, opposite of the expected approach course, which is not the same as the BRC. BRC is Space Recovery Course is the ship's sailing course, and the approach course is that 8, 9, 10, 11 degree angle uh, off to the right or to the left of the landing pattern, and you'll see that on the carrier. Remember, there's an angle deck there, and it's about 10 degrees roughly. And so the the expected approach course is 346 degrees, so 180 from that is 166. So they send me out to this radio, and you see I'm at 20.75 nautical miles right now. Uh, there's 21 nautical miles. I'm trying to cross that angle of the 166, so it'll be 346 is the reciprocal. You'll see that in the box right there. And then I'm going to enter my track. So I cross over the, and then I realized I needed to cross over the uh, radio line in order to get into a six minute racetrack pattern where I go around in a racetrack so that when I come out of the racetrack on my approach time, I'm on the radio and pointing straight at the ship. So with this, imagine if the line I'm on right now is the radio they assigned me. You can see 346, so that means the reciprocal is going to be. As a matter of fact, if I do this, uh, let's go, there's, nope, let's try this one. Nope, let's go back to range and bearing. And so if I do this, now I'm going to I'm gonna do my racetrack again, and I'm looking at my commence time. And when you see the real video of what I did here, you'll notice, uh, you'll notice that you have to adjust your six-minute racetrack time in the holding pattern to make it so that you come out at about, uh, so I turned early out of this because I want to make sure that I come out at about the commence time at 21 nautical miles. So right about there I reach my commence time, I call in commencing, they give me a radar contact and we go on down. And then I'll speed this up, let's go to 10x so you can see the rest of this. So you can see here, let's get in a little close so you can see the boat. So you can see I'm getting down, I'm doing all my other stuff that we'll cover in the next series of videos and you can see that I'm at 1200 feet, little 1300 feet, 1200 feet, and I dropped my flaps there and ballooned up a little bit. And again, this is my third uh, case three approach that I've done. Uh, I've only done three of these, so you'll get better, I'll get better as we go. So there we come down. Now at this point, we're, um, we are t inside three miles. I should already be down and then just waiting to intersect the glide slope. But I followed the needles from six miles all the way down to the deck. So now let's go overhead and let's go look at the uh, real video. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm in the jet. And let's unpause. All right. So what I usually do is I just spawned in the jet. I'm going to go and climb up to altitude. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and zip this up. I'm going to climb up to altitude, simulate I'm coming back from a mission, get up above the clouds, uh, go ahead and set up my cockpit the way I want it. I usually use my radar on the left so I can see what's out in front of me. Uh, I'm going to rely on the controllers. I set my bingo for 3,000 where I need it to be. I go ahead and set up the TACAN. You'll need to establish the TACAN, and you'll want to set up the radios. You'll want to set up the ILS. Uh, and remember, if you're going to set a course line, you, you have to have that course line set uh, you have to have the tack hand set before you can set the course line. So let's see, let's look, look down here. I've got my 3000 big row. And then I've got my hook bypass on carrier. I've got my anti skid off. I've got my, uh, made sure all of my switches are in the proper position. Flaps are up, retracted, uh, launch bar, taxi landing light is off. And everything else is set. So then you're going around and you get your call. And then you go to your Marshall assignment. So you can see we're at 15,000 right here. Our Marshall assignment altitude is 6,000 at 21 miles. And you can see on the HSI on the right screen there that I have the bearing line of the 166 radial all mapped in there to the TACAN station, which is the ship. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to try to intersect that. I'm going to try to get as close as I can to 21 miles. Uh, at the intersect point where I should cross over it and go into my left-hand orbit racetrack. And again, 
take and marginalize this, break it down into smaller chunks, and practice the little small chunks. Now you'll notice over here, I don't have an unrealistic fuel weight of 100% of like 12,000, 16,000 pounds with full tanks and everything. I've got a fuel weight and two bags and a couple training devices on my wingtips to simulate I'm coming back from a training mission. And so my weight of my aircraft is a appropriate for this procedure. So now we're really relying on the instruments and on the HUD uh, in this. Now you can see right here, this is where I forgot, oh, I should have crossed over the bearing line, enter the racetrack from the other side, so that when you're on the radial for the, for the upwind portion of the racetrack, you're heading towards the ship. So now I'm turning into it, and if I bring up the clock, my approach time is 4-5. So I'm at 41, there's 42. So I'm trying to schedule it out so that I get to 4-5. Okay, so I've got another, looks like I'm going to do, I'm coming up on one, 21 miles, so I'm going to have to do one more part of a racetrack. I'm at 4-3, so I've got two minutes. So I'm going to cut my uh, six-minute racetrack into a third. So I'm going to go into the downwind, and I'm, right now I'm at one minute to go. So I go for a little bit, and then I turn, and I'm coming back. See, I've got about three miles, four miles from the turn uh, from the commence line and let's go ahead and unpause it commencing just called commencing almost right on time and at 21 just crossing 21 much let's see what she says perfect I mean it wasn't perfect but it, it was definitely nice so now I'm descending at about 4,000 feet per minute till I get down to my platform, which is 5,000 feet. And it, it really quickly, you got to check in. As soon as she hands you off, you got to check in, because you're going to have to hit platform. And you'll notice that I checked in late, and now I'm hitting platform late. So I'm already past. So I called platform. I was like 600, 700 feet below the platform when I called it in. So, but just continue the approach. Call it in when you can. And again, you'll get better. I'll get better as we go along through this. So now, I, once I've reached platform, I'm now doing a descent rate of 2,000 feet per minute. Now for you guys new to the Hornet, the descent rate you can check above your altimeter on the, on the uh, right side of the HUD. You can see above that is your, your uh, positive or negative descent rate. Right now we're going down at about 2,000 feet per minute. It's like 16, 1,900, there we go. And again, a lot of this is muscle memory and getting to the point where you're familiar and comfortable with it. But you'll never get there if you don't try. And you got to make a lot of mistakes before you do it. I obviously do. So we're going down. And now we're trying to fly the needle. So I'm looking at my HSI. You can see that I'm on 5 mile scale on the right hand DDI. I'm at looks like I'm a, probably about a half a mile to the right of the lane. So I'm going to come over until I intersect the lane and come back to 346. So you can see I'm doing about 10 degrees to the left. There's 356, 357. And again, the top row numbers up there, the 000, that's my compass ribbon. And the caret is where the aircraft is directing me to. It's uh, correlated to the magnetic compass. So my speed, I'm trying to get down to the point where I get to 1,200 feet. I'm at 250, so I can configure up at 10 miles. So we're not too bad. This is, like I said, this is my third attempt at this, and I don't get any of the numbers exactly perfect, but, you know, it's all part of the training. So I'm almost at 10 miles. I just crossed under my 1,200, uh, under my 1,200 feet. So I'm trying to climb back up without losing any more altitude. And you'll see where I balloon up after hitting the flaps. So... That's one of the things you've just got to anticipate. I, I would recommend doing the flaps in partial. Uh, get your speed down under control first. If you put the flaps down over 200, you're going to balloon a little bit. And that's what I found in the supercarrier or in the uh, F-18 Hornet. So I can go ahead and get rid of the bar at the bottom now. Go outside and look at this. I just use a little speed brake to try to slow down before we... Uh, because you can see I got a whole thousand feet above my assigned altitude. Okay, I'm at eight miles. Now I'm on my I'm on my line, so I actually went a little bit over it. You can see the velocity vector and the lineup bar for the uh, localizer on the uh, on the uh, ILS lineup is uh, slightly to the right. I need to be have that right in the middle of the velocity vector if I can. So I'm going to come back over. 
and let's see how it does. I'm really close to it, not too bad. And you can see in the DDI down there that I'm almost on the line with a little kilter to the right. So normally uh, the book says that you're supposed to go to six miles and that's when you start your descent uh, to you want to be at 600 feet AGL at three miles. But what I did is I just ran and flew the 1200 feet until I intersected the, uh, the glide path. A little scan in the cockpit here. So I'm configured for landing. My hook is down. And if you're OCD like me, my flaps are down full. My gear is down full. So if you're OCD like me, you'll probably check that about three or four times during the approach. All right, there's six nautical miles. We've got our glide slope needle now. He just had me say needles. And I called up and on, which means I'm on center line and you need to come up. And he concurred. That's what he sees on his scope too. And ACLS stands for Automated Carrier Landing System, which I don't think is implemented in DCS right now, but we're doing this manual. We're doing this the old school way, stick and rudder. Now when you guys are doing this, this is why it's crucial to have your throttle set appropriately. Uh, I've got a video out there on how to set curves for the Warthog for the Hornet, for the throttle uh, left and right, and it helps, uh, as a matter of fact, 100% of the people that have tried it said it helps them out. I got it from my friend Thread in Australia, uh, day one when I got the Warthog, and I haven't had to change it since. It I can set cruise, it's got the afterburner detent in the right spot. Okay, so the needle, the, uh, the horizontal needle, which is the glide slope, is starting to come down. So I'm using my little, you know, I'm going slow enough, 142 knots. I'm using my little approach speed to make small corrections here and there. And you can see, you can see where we're slowly getting to the right a little bit. Now I can see the laser line up light out there. That gives me a little bit of a, uh, a reference point to look at and I can still see partial horizon but I can't see the ship totally right now so we're still under case uh, case three conditions and a lot of you guys will say hey wait a minute this week you know you would turn this into a case two you know we're, we're training for case three so we're going to continue case three all the way down to the deck you guys are welcome to do what you like but uh, truly a case two has different restrictions that are uh, halfway in between case one and case three and we'll cover those in a different video series Case two is pretty simple. I think we could do it all in one video. There's one of my cruisers over there, a destroyer. I wish they made the needles uh, optional in the HUD. I don't want to see that in the HUD. I just want to fly the needles. I wish, or the the Eiffels. I wish, I wish you could take that out of the screen. If you guys know how to turn that off so it doesn't come on, I know you can drag it out of the way by grabbing the word "fols," "floss," and take it away and I've done that before it's just hard to do when you're flying if you don't want to take your hands off the controls so I've got my water line at the five degree line it's just like a normal case one at this point I'm just flying the the ball as soon as I call it at three quarters of a mile which is about point seven halfway between point seven and point eight remember okay he just called me to call the ball and I'm and I just called Hornet ball there we go Twenty six knots down the angle, fly the ball, fly the ball. And I don't get any comments on this. I do get some I do get a score. I do get ease guns. I think I catch a two wire on this. So I straighten up for the lineup for the last little bit of the touchdown, and there's the grade. Yep, two wire ease two two wire ease guns. That was pretty good. I don't think this was bad at all for my third time. And boy, if I really take and break down all the different parts of this, uh, to the point where um, where I'm doing it right, I think it'll work out good. Well, that's part one today, guys. I, I hope you like this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here, and uh, later on this week, I will have uh, part two or phase two, which is from the commencing 
down to the configuration phase, which will take us down to the next level. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys like this, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Uh, you, I, I tell people, you know, if you if you want to hit the notification bell, you can. But if you just if you're a subscriber, just come back every now and then and see what we have latest and greatest and everything. Remember, it's those likes and uh, comments that help to get this up in the feed so more people see it and more people can share in the comments. Again, we're not experts here at the Air Warfare Group. We're just enthusiasts, but we like your input. Uh, we like your philosophies and sharing. So be sure to leave us a comment. Uh, give us some links to some of your videos. We'd be glad to check them out. That's all I've got for now. Juice is going. Bye-bye. See you guys.